Hey everybody, Meme Cat here. Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, last time we left off, uh, we were. Oh yeah, we were writing a poem. Okay, now time to write the poem. Uh, words that would match with girls. Who are you going for? Okay, Natsuki likes cute things. Uh, Yuri likes, uh,. Horror stuff. Uh, Doki Doki. Why is the word Doki Doki? She cares about the club. Okay. So. We should probably go for Doki Doki. Uh. Together? Oh, it is her. Oh, the icons bounce up. Um. Uh, intellectual. Ah, that's Yuri. I should have thought that was Yuri. Uh, Candy, that's Natsuki. No, uh, I like Yuri, but there's something a little bit off about her. I think I'm gonna go for Sayori. I I don't know. Eh. The. Um, unrequited. Oh my gosh, he has the word unrequited. A tone, whistle, analysis, hope, landscape, captive, shopping, jumpy, bliss, hurt. Okay. Uh. Hope. Oh my god, I'm getting Sayori a lot. My mascara blanket, secretive time, crimson, passion, pout, vivid, feather, giggle. Uh, passion. Wow, Sayori again. Destiny, this one can not. Uh, wow. Cheer. Wow, I'm getting a lot of points with Sayori. Um. Ko <laughs> Kawaii. Oh, that's Natsuki. Romance, melancholy, extraordinary, whirlwind, swimsuit, hopeless, cheek spinning, parfait, nipple. Romance. All right, uh, let's get through this. Happiness. All right. Uh, sunny. Uh, kiss. Um. Boop. Uh, fireworks. Adventure. Uh. Um. Bubbles. Oh god, a puppy! In oh! Okay, um... Termination! That- that's you? Uh, clumsy! <laughs> uh, imagination! Um... Silly! Uh... Whew! Some bad words here, um... Milk! What kind of messed up poem did I write? Uh, oh, not so even remember her voice. Hi again, meme cat. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha ha ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I, I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, meme cat. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Mm, what is that? What? Mm? I, I don't know. MMM. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki pops back into her seat. Uh, the Mickey. Don't worry, guys. 
the Mickey Mouse voice. Uh, Meme Cat always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Wow. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. Uh... How come? You and Meme Cat can become good friends too. Um... Sayori. Hmm? <laughs> dot dot dot. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. I, I keep wanting to change away from the Mickey Mouse voice because I'm afraid that later on we're gonna go into like a serious emotional scene and the Mickey Mouse voice is just gonna completely ruin everything. Uh, a, a cute voice. Oh, oh, you even brought you something today, you know? W wait, Sayori? Eh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy! It's really nothing. What is it? N n never mind. Say Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Eh? I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. Eh? I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. God, I'm so indecisive. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It will make me happy no matter what. I is that so? Yeah. I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into a bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you want it. Th this is... How's this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect that Monica to t kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she wasn't waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man, looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. 
The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. God damn it, Monica took Sayori's voice. Damn it. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with a... <sighs> Nuts. Fine. I relent to the Mickey Mouse voice. I surrender. Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever... Nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know. And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori's taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh. That... I mean... Huh. That's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? What, what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Ahaha! Uh -huh. I mean... Uh -huh. <coughs> my, my voice. Ahaha! Uh -huh. Good thinking! Natsuki would love to do that. Ah! Ah! You're right! Natsuki makes the best cupcakes! That works out perfectly! I will figure this voice out later, it will kill me. That... That wasn't why you suggested it? Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy! Uh, <laughs> cupcakes it is then! I'm hung- I'm hungry! Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual, usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. What? I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> Sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're, you're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud! I can't let everybody know that I'm a weeaboo. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. Don't give me that look. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... Uh... It's a secret! I knew it. Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around at herself. How? How is it written? How is it written all over me? God, my voice is confused. I'm confused now. How is it written all over me? 
You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Uh? I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. That's more than just your hair. Sherlock Holmes here. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. Here. I try to wipe off the same stain with my finger. But, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well... I, Sayori's voice is going somewhere near Natsuki's and Monica at this rate. I'm trying to find... Fine. Never mind. God damn it. Well, I'll, I'll switch voices. Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh? D don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It it's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I, I, I guess... Hey, be careful. The, put the button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it, it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again! D don't say that out loud! <laughs> anyway... You look much better now, so... Ah... Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so... But it's so stuffy! I keep trying to revert back to this voice because it's Monica. Ah! Kasa! But it's so stuffy! Oh, It's not worth it at all! Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew! That's so much better! Sayori, Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Oh, I like her. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone! 
<laughs> now she sounds like some kind of third grader teacher. Uh, um. Okay, everyone. Eh? Whoops. Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Meme Cat, I can't wait to read yours! Yeah, same. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't- I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Uh, who should I show my poem to first? Sayori. I'm definitely most comfortable sharing it with Sayori first. She's my good friend after all. And soon to be girlfriend. Oh! Oh my goodness! This is so good, Meme Cat! Eh? I love it! I had no idea you were such a good writer! Sayori? You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well... Maybe that's why! Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> what? Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem, it's a meme cat poem! And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. And unbelievably, unbelievably cute. <laughs> I'm really happy that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Meme Cat. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. Y yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold it you to that then. Yay! Now you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> I the sound effects, the cute laughter. We'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? 
Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> That's nice. Sayori. This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No! J just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I, I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast! Even though you were late to school? It's, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyways, anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, yeah. But next time I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh... I guess... Uh, Natsuki? Um, dot 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 question mark? Well, well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. <sighs> well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. W what? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well... Because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decide to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Water. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, Yuri. Dot dot dot. Hmm. Dot dot dot. Yuri stares at the poem. I mean, Yuri stares at the poem. Narrator voice. 
A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um... Oh! Uh, sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um... It's fine, don't force yourself. I I'm not. I just need to- I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. <sighs> okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Er, uh, yeah. Why do you ask? Uh, I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, so it's that bad. Uh, no! D did I just- did I just raise my voice? I mean... Oh god. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a, style, a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Um... Well... N never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki, or all of them. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry to have- I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. But what? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It, it wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yui? Hoo hoo. Actually, the story- Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Meme Cat. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. Oh, uh, my nose itches. I mean... But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. 
They usually do more than tell a simple story, or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. That's dark. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. The last person, Monica. Then we'll probably end the episode. Hi, Meme Cat! Having good time so far? Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until more, I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ahaha! <laughs> Don't worry, Meme Cat. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I handed Monica my poem. Mmm! I like this one! It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Ah, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up more being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it that too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, you can't have happy things without sad things, otherwise you wouldn't know what happy things are. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up trying differ different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ahaha. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. It couldn't have been me. See? The direction the sparkle protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No! I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas. Already scorched 
with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very free form, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ahaha, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. But when performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah. Well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep, deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a certain point, specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a dark, big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew. Oh, same here. All right then, I think we're gonna end it off here with uh, the end of the poetry session. And uh, so next episode, uh, we'll continue l onwards. Oh my god, yes, I got Sayori. So far, I like Sayori the most. She's, I mean, between Sayori and Monica, Yuri's also nice. I don't, I'm not really into Natsuki, not really. But Sayori, Sayori's just adorable, man. I just find Sayo Sayori adorable. And, uh, by the way, uh, leave uh, feedback in the comments down below about this, this series, uh, if you'd like to see more and stuff. And, uh, also about my voices. Um, should I continue doing this, or should I change anybody's voice? Uh, please tell me, because it's kind of hard to decide, really. I'm not really sure how to make these voices. I'm kind of inexperienced at this, so bear with it for a while. But, yeah, I guess, uh, well, I, I guess we'll see each other next time. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like, comment, subscribe only if you want to, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Man, I really messed up the in outro this time, didn't I? Jesus. See ya.